Hi and thanks for watching this video which is about programming a simple game using Auric Basic. Um, this is a follow-up video um, where I was using my Auric One to program a simple game in 10 minutes flat. Today I'm going to use the Auric Atmos uh, because it's got a much better keyboard as you can see and the idea is going to be to see if I can in just another 10 minutes make uh, an enhancement to the game to to hopefully improve it, make it more appealing in some way. Um, however, I still want to use Auric Basic, uh, the original Auric One Basic. Now, that is going to be made possible through this device here called Auric Art, and Auric Art has a number of ROMs built into it, uh, which means I can select the Auric One ROM, which is basic 1.0. Basic 1.1 is the Atmos ROM so I'm going to pick basic 1.0 and it will work perfectly fine on the Auric Atmos because the underlying hardware is basically the same. So that's why we're able to see a version 1.0 ROM fire up. So the first thing I need to do is load the original game and uh, I had saved it using uh, Audacity so you can see the waveform here that is saved and uh, I'm just going to play that back um, into the uh, Auric. So I'll press enter here and then play on Audacity. And it only takes um, about seven and a half, eight seconds to load this game, which is a relief. And if I list it, we can see um, it's a very simple game. I mean, it starts here and line 3030 is at the bottom. Uh, and it's literally just about two pages of screen, and that's all. Uh, so it's a very short uh, program, but uh, let's review what it does. So I can go left and right, and my player at the bottom there needs to try and shoot the alien, which is already not going to manage. And it shows the score at the end of the game. So I am the ampersand, the alien is the at symbol, and the missile is the up arrow symbol. So you can see I can, using the Z and X keys, I can move left and right, and then it gives me the score at the end of the game. So that's the game. I'm gonna put it to background and we can read. That's the game. Uh, so what can I do in 10 minutes that will make this an improvement? So I've already spent 10 minutes making this game, so what can we do in another 10 minutes? Uh, one of the things that we can certainly do is redefine graphics, I think, in 10 minutes. Uh, the other thing is, I believe if I look at 1000, which is the initialization routine, I had set the high score, line 1015, height score equals zero, HS equals zero. I didn't get a chance at the end of the last uh, 10 minutes to actually implement high score, so we're going to do that. Um, and also, if I look at the game dead routine, it just shows you the score at the end um, after the game is finished. You find your you find out your score. So it might be cool to actually, if we look at the the main routine line thirty, the the repeats, um, move the player. Then in line forty, fifty, move the bullet. Sixty, move the alien. Then seventy, wait ten and then keep going until dead is true. Well, maybe in this loop we should also show the game uh, stats, so the score and the high score. That would be nice rather than having to see that only at the end of the game. <clears throat> so those are the three elements that I want to try to uh, address uh, in 10 minutes uh, flat. Um, so the clock starts when I actually start to type, and let's just go for it. So the countdown has started. Now, um, if I go to 1000, whereas the initialization routine, we'll certainly need to uh, redefine the characters here because we only want to do that once. And the Auric has uh, redefinable characters. And if I get the uh, trusty Auric manual out, you can see here on text mode, the standard character set is at hex B400. Now, um, the characters are stored in ASCII order from B400 
and that means if I know the ASCII codes of the characters I want to redefine, um, then I, I'll know which piece of which bits of memory to uh, uh, adjust, and then how to adjust that. Well, back to the good old days. Um, we'll all remember this, I'm sure. I've got my gridded paper, and I've got eight bytes of data for character 64, which is the alien, and character 38, which is the the ship, and um, character 94, which is the bullet. So I've already gridded this out. I don't think uh, it's fair to expect in 10 minutes I would both design the, the character sets and type them in. So let's go ahead with this. How am I going to do that? Um, I'm thinking back to back in the day how I might have done it. And I will first set the character to, um, I'm just looking, at, looking up this piece of paper, 64. Let's set C to 64 and it goes up to 9000. And that is where we're going to define the character. Uh, that's the character for the alien, so let's then do the same for the character for the ship and also then the same for the character for the bullets. That's 94. Um, and then I need to return from this routine because I overwrote that at line 1020. <clears throat> then at line 9000, um, uh, redefine chars. Uh, we have the inputs of variable C, so we have the we need to calculate the address. Where does the character's uh, definition start? Well, it's at B400 plus eight times the code of the character, and we need to go from that address to B400 plus eight times that character plus seven. So we're going from zero row zero to row seven. So that's eight bytes of data. And we read each byte from a data statement, so we use read D, and then we can poke the address with that piece of data, and we go next to get the next address until it's done, and then we should be able to return. So then let's get the data in there. So um, just to remind you, I'm just typing in from this sheet here. So uh, for the alien, it's 33, 18, 43, 45, 63, 30, 18, 33. And then for the player ship. And then finally for the bullet. Okay, good. So that will redefine the characters. Uh, the other thing then we want to do is uh, maybe update the screen um, and show the score in uh, real time. So, that's, so you can see at line 70 there's a, there's a delay there, uh, wait 10. Now instead of wait 10, uh, I think at line 70 we can just do a plot. Um, uh, I'll plot at position 4 and row 0, score, oh god, if I can spell, plus the string value of score, jeez, score, and then at line 72, uh, 71, I'll plot um, over to the right somewhere, so maybe around about line uh, like, like 25, I score plus SDR string. So SDR dollar converts a numeric variable into a string. So I'm plotting, I need to put a colon there, otherwise it won't look the same. And the score display, and that won't be very nice. So that's that. Um, okay, and then, oh, I'm going to. Yeah, I'll, I'll put, I know there's a bug with the way that the Auric converts score numbers into strings, but we'll talk about that in a moment. But I've only got four minutes, 50 seconds left. Um, when you're dead, um, when you're dead, where is it? There it is. It, zap, it does zap zap and shows the score. So let's not do that. Uh, 6,000, and so let's go to the dead, let's list 6,000 to 6,009, 
so we can just see that bit so let's do 6010 I'm actually going to change it to explode um, and I'm going to plot no that's that's fine uh, explode and then let's wait 100 at line 6020 and uh, oh I know what I'll do I, I will plot at 6015 plot uh, I don't know like like 30 no uh, around about the middle of the screen which is 20 so let's do 12 uh, and a middle of about there that will do you you failed yeah it's a harsh game if you die it's seen as failure so that will do an explode sound it will plot you failed and it will carry on from there uh, the other thing we want to do is when you when we change the score uh, where do we hit the where do we do the hits? Ah, oh, score equals score plus one return. Okay, let's do um, in the main game loop. Oh my goodness, I'm not typing very well. In the in the main game loop, what we're going to do is um, before we show the high score. So let's say at line sixty-five, we're going to check if the score is greater than high score. Then set the high score equal to the score. So that helps to keep the high score going. Um, and then um, there's one more element I wanted to do, which is to maybe put some color on the screen. Um, at the moment, uh, it's a blue background and red foreground. But I think what we can do is show the player ship in a different color. And because of the way that, um, the, where's the move player? Here it is, line 3000. Um, so let's just let's see if I've got time to do this. Line three thousand. Um, so I'm plotting PXPY a space that's a blank. Uh, three thousand and fifty. I'm plotting PXPY ampersand. Now because of the way it works, at line three thousand forty-five, I'm going to plot PX minus one PY. Um, the colour that I want. Uh, I'm going to do it in colour uh, magenta. I think that will work. Six is magenta. And the reason is that um, at one character to the left, um, the six is, a, is called an attribute. So the auric display processor, the ULA, will um, see this number six and change the colour of the foreground for the rest of that line until it sees another attribute. So this is called the serial attribute system, and it's it's kind of powerful, but also quite limiting. But, uh, but that's how you do it anyway. Um, so I've now I've changed the color there, and if I look at um, four thousand, I think this is where we're moving the bullets. So let's um, at four oh five five. Let's plot uh, bx minus one by. Let's plot uh, three, which is yellow. That's the colour of the bullet. And then um, let's look at the alien. No, that's the start game. Maybe that's at 5,000 then. Yeah, move alien. So at 5,050, I want to plot AX minus one, AY, the colour of the alien, which will be red, which is that color there um, and I've only got 27 seconds to go so um, there was one other thing I wanted to do which was um, if I've got if I've got 10 seconds to go um, because there's a bug in the auric screen I'm going to do at line 25 plot 0 comma 0 2 um, and that's going to change the foreground to green um, at row zero. The timer is done. I've expired all the time, so no more coding allowed. And I hope it works. Um, this video is only 15 minutes in, so I'm sorry about that. Um, so I could review the game, but I, I don't think we need to because I've just spoken about all of it. Uh, gosh, let's go uh, see if it works. failed but I can't see the alien so
let's go to where the alien is being displayed. Oh no. First I have to be able to type properly. So it's not the only one's key fault. Ah uh, yeah, I see what I've done. 5050 I put the green but I've uh, I then I overwrote the actual plots AX comma AY comma and then the at symbol which is the alien so that's what I meant to do there we go uh, so I was putting the color on there but I wasn't putting so that so this is a bug fix okay the 10 minutes doesn't include bug fixing um, and in fact what I actually did was to erase the line inadvertently, so I think that's okay. Let's let let's try this. It works. This bit works. It's high scores working. <clears throat> and I seem to have improved my. No, I haven't. Okay. Oh no. High score equals zero. What happened there then? Where's that? Let's 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 break this out. So somewhere the high score is being reset to zero. Initialize the high score is being set to zero there. Um, and then uh, two thousand score equals naught. Well, I hate debugging uh, in real time, but I'm, I'm going to try and do it anyway. I don't know what that little glitch was. Uh, if SC is greater than high score, then high score is equal to SC. That's okay. So why is it getting reset to zero? That's because in line 71, I wasn't actually showing the high score but the score, silly Billy. Let's go again. And it's that magenta, as you can see, it's actually cyan, because I forgot that uh, it's basically six, four plus two equals six, four is blue, and two is green, so green and blue together make cyan on the other palette. But this is working, I think. But let's see if I die. Failed. Yeah. And the high score is correct. Oh. Game over. So this is it. This is the game. And it works in 10 minutes. Let's just let's stop this, otherwise it's going to be irritating. Um, I wrote it in 10 minutes. This video is 18 minutes long, but the other 8 minutes was just trying to explain how it all works as I was typing it in. So I hope uh, that was interesting and thank you very much for watching this video.